busy as I am. Thank you for making the time, but as I need not tell any of you we're in a really uh, an important area here, and we have to act. I, uh, I'm joined by a group of Democratic governors. We work closely to protect women's rights after this tragic reversal of Roe v. Wade. A terrible, extreme decision, in my view, upending lives and impacting on the health and safety of millions of women. And I share the public outrage that this extremist court has committed to moving America backwards with fewer rights, less autonomy, and politicians invading the most personal decisions that not only women, but we'll find if they expand, expand on, on this decision, uh, men as well. But as I've said last week, this is not over. Last week, I announced two specific actions. First, if extremist governors try to block a woman from traveling from her state that prohibits her from seeking medical help she needs to a state that provides that care, the federal government will act to protect her bedrock rights through the attorney general's office. Second, <clears throat> if states try to block a woman from getting medication the FDA has already approved and has been available for more than 20 years, my administration will act and protect that woman's right to that medication. And there are many other unlawful actions, in my view, that states are preparing to take that we'll have, uh, we'll have to address as well. But ultimately, Congress is going to have to act to codify the row into federal law. But as, as I said yesterday, the filibuster should not stand in the way of us being able to do that. But right now, we don't have the votes in the Senate to change the filibuster on, uh, on, at, the, at the moment. That means we need two more votes now, uh, not now, when we vote, probably after November, uh, more senators and House majority, uh, and the House majority elected in November, to get this bill to my desk. So the choice is clear. We either elect federal senators and representatives who will codify Roe, or Republicans who will elect the House and Senate who will try to ban abortions nationwide, nationwide. This is going to go one way or the other after November. So let's remember, the reasoning of this decision has an impact much beyond Roe and to the right to privacy more generally. Justice Thomas himself said that. Under the reasoning of this decision, that the court should reconsider marriage equality and contraception. And there's a lot at stake here. In the meantime, I want to hear what the governors are doing talk about my plans and discuss what we can do as, until Congress acts. This is not over. It's not over. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jen Klein, the, the head of the White House Gender Policy Council, and we'll proceed with the discussions. Thank Jen. you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and I'd like to add my thanks to each of you for joining and for your leadership. We'd, as the president just said, really like to hear from you about both what you've done and further action that you're planning to take. So we're going to start with you, Governor Hochul, from New York. Over to you. Thank you, Jen. And thank you, Mr. President, for convening us with the sense of urgency that I feel that you are conveying, because this is a frightening time for women all across our nation. A lot of fear and anxiety out there. And I hear it from women all across the state, or they come up to me at subway stops in New York City, at farmers markets, literally young women who never even had to think about this right are coming up and putting their arms around my neck and sobbing. So there is such stress out there. So we, in the state of New York, this came the day after the Supreme Court also told us that we did not have the right to protect our citizens from people carrying concealed weapons in places like subways and Times Square, et cetera. So what I had to do is convene an extraordinary session because they weren't due back until January. I brought them back. And literally at 2 a.m. this morning, while we're still working on the gun legislation, I changed my proclamation to say we'll also include, to give further protections for women in the state, what we call the equality agenda. This will prohibit discrimination on the basis of pregnancy and pregnancy outcomes and reproductive health care and autonomy. So we're one step closer as of uh, this afternoon. I think it's going to be passed by both houses to enshrine abortion rights in our state constitution. So as long as I'm governor, these rights will not be rolled up back. But we also are prepared to serve as a destination for women who'll be looking to a place like New York and other states, of my colleagues on the call, as a safe harbor. So even before the Supreme Court decision, I knew I had to beef up our 
our opportunities for women to come from other states. We allocated $35 million right off the bat to go to providers so they could hire more people, expand their space, and make sure that they can keep their staff safe from violence as well. And we also decided to mandate all insurance companies doing business in the state of New York now have to cover abortion. And I signed six bills related to protecting our providers after the decision came down. We will stop the extradition of any, uh, any search for uh, one of our providers or a woman who's in our state we're wanted under criminal charges. That's not happening in New York. And we're also defending our abortion providers from malpractice and other lawsuits. We also launched a public awareness campaign because there's a lot of misinformation. Women in New York are seeing the national news. They don't know whether their rights are protected here in New York. So we're gonna continue to be leaders in this fight, protect our providers, protect them from the vigilante justice, which has been unleashed by the states that are going to allow these private rights of action, where they're gonna hunt down women and providers. Uh, this is you know, chaos, it's frightening, but also we're doing what we can to make sure that you know, we are protected. Well, what's happening now? The rights of millions of women across this country are now falling on the shorter, shoulders of just a handful of states. Just a handful of states are now gonna to have to take care of the healthcare of women from other states. So we believe, as you do, Mr. President, that what's available to New Yorkers and the other enlightened states should be available to all Americans and no one should have to travel. And that's why, as you agree with us, Congress has to act. And we sent a letter way back to Congress saying, please pass the Women's Health Protection Act. Let's get it through the Senate. So what we're doing at the state level is key, but I completely agree with you and I commend you, Mr. President, for standing up and talking about the fact that it is the filibuster that's preventing the majority of senators, and it is the majority of senators who want to speak on behalf of the majority of Americans. But we understand our options are limited until next January with a new Senate, and we're all going to be focusing very hard on that outcome because it is a matter of life and death for American women because we do not want to go back to the days anywhere in this country of the, the back alley abortions, which are real, I talked to one of my neighbors down the hall who used, whose husband used to perform these abortions before abortion was legal in New York State in 1970. And so this is not just hyperbole, it is real. So what we're asking to help continue at the federal level, we believe that more can be done to fund family planning services more broadly to allow the providers and their clinics to have state federal resources for these services and they can focus on private dollars for abortion services. And I'm really grateful that you're putting an emphasis on what's going to happen for women to be able to continue to receive abortion services by mail. I mean, this is going to be a battle that, when, that people would not have foreseen. We want to make sure that there's no unlawful interference and we have to do that to ease public concerns. And also, Mr. President, we'd ask that you consider your ability to use federal facilities. What am I talking about? Veterans hospitals, military bases, and other places where the federal government controls the jurisdiction in some of the states that are hostile to women's rights and make sure that those services can be available to other women. So those are just a few of the ideas that we encourage you to look at. Uh, an idea of what we're doing at the New York state level, but literally before uh, close of business today, we will have the first step toward a process of changing our constitution, which is the boldest step we can take. And we just started that today. So, uh, so thank you for convening us. We are there to stand with you to do something that uh, protect a right that my mother's generation had a fight for, I fought for, my daughter who's in her thirties had a fight for, and now Mr. President, I have a grand new, gra brand new granddaughter and thank you for your note acknowledging that. Uh, I didn't think we'd have to fight this battle for her generation as well, but apparently we do, but we are ready to take on that fight. So thank you. Well, I didn't think we would either. Uh, I was worried we would, but you know, uh, I think that a lot of the folks don't understand what this decision means. It means if, uh, if you got an 11-year-old child who's a victim of incest and finds herself pregnant, which occurs, that, you know, you, she can't get choice. She, she can't, her health can't be protected. You find, uh, you know, uh, if you're raped, there's no exception. I mean, there's so many things that people really haven't focused on yet beyond the fundamental right of a woman to be able to choose. And so uh, I, I just think that, as you pointed out, uh, Kathy, we're going to, it's just going to be a big deal. We get people out to vote. 
because uh, here's what's going to happen, I, my, I predict. If we don't, if we don't take this, keep the Senate, increase it in the House, we're going to be in a situation where the Republicans are going to pass a nationwide prohibition consistent with what the Supreme Court ruled. And so uh, there's a lot at stake here, but I'm sure glad you're leading New York. For real. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.